Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is using the PKA values for glutamic acid and PKA values are here, indicate the ionic form which predominates at this pH of the solution and second question what is the net charge of the predominant form at each of this pH. So we are told that amino acid is glutamic acid and the formula is going to be as follows. So here is going to be a central carbon and here is a carboxylic carbon and we are also going to have hydrogen here and nitrogen group here. And here is going to be R group which is going to be as follows. So CH2, CH2 and secondary carboxylic acid group here. So carbon, oxygen and another oxygen here. So we have here positive charge and two negative charges here. So overall net charge of this amino acid at the physiological pH which is going to be 7.4. This is going to be predominant form and the charge is going to be minus 1. So plus 1, minus 1, minus 1 is going to be minus 1. So our first step would be what is a pK1, pK2 and pKr and pK1 is going to be pH of the carboxylic acid group here. So this is going to be pK1. This is group which is amino group is pK2 and carboxylic acid secondary carboxylic acid group is going to be pKr. And we are told that pK1 is 2.19. So 2.19. pK2 is 9.16. So 9.16. 16 and pKr is 4.25. 4.25. At this first step, just memorize it. Carboxylic acid group of the backbone is pK1 and amino group is pK2 and pKr is easy to memorize because it has R. R stands for the R chain or R group. So now what this number stands for? This number stands for the pH below which this group is going to be protonized and if pH of the solution is going to be above this number, it's going to be deprotonized. If pH of the solution is going to be below this number, this carboxylic acid group is going to be protonized. If our solution pH is going to be above this number, then this group is going to be deprotonized. And here pK2, if pH of the solution is going to be below this number, then we are going to have positive charge here and it's going to be protonized. If pH of our solution is going to be above this number, this amino group is going to be deprotonized and we are going to have NH2 instead of NH3 here and it's going to lose this positive charge. So this was a theory. Now let's solve the problem. We have three variants, pH1. So what's going to happen to this amino acid, glutamic acid at pH1? What's going to happen to pK1? It is below this number. That means that this group is going to be protonized and we are not going to have here um, negative charge. So pK1 is going to be zero. So zero. What's going to happen to pK2? pH1 is below this number. So this group is going to be protonized and the charge is going to be plus one. And what's going to happen at pH1 with this carboxylic, secondary carboxylic acid group because pH1 is below this number this group is going to be protonized and the charge is going to be zero. So 
charge of this group PKR is going to be zero and net charge is going to be zero plus one plus zero is going to be plus one, positive one. Now let's take a look what's going to happen to this amino acid at pH seven. So take a look, pH seven is greater than this number. That means that this oxygen here is going to be deprotonized and we are going to get here negative charge. And let's put negative one here for pK one group. As for the pK two, uh, seven, pH seven is below this number, smaller than this number. So this group is going to be protonized. So for pK two, we are going to have plus one, so positive charge. And for pKr, pH seven is greater than this number. And as you remember, below this number, this group would be protonized above this number would be deprotonized. So this group would be deprotonized and the charge is going to be negative. So this group is going to lose hydrogen. So negative one and net charge at pH seven is going to be negative one plus one, negative one. So going to be net charge minus one. Now let's take a look what's going to happen at pH 13 with this amino acid. pK1, pH13 is greater than this number. So this group is going to be deprotonized and would be negatively charged. So let's put negative one for pK1. As for the pK2, 13, pH13 is also greater than this number. That means that this group is going to be deprotonized. And if we lose hydrogen here, this group is not going to be charged, so would have charge which is going to be zero. And as for the pKr, again, pH 13 is greater than this number. So this group is going to be deprotonized and we are going to have here negative charge. So minus one. And if pH of the solution is going to be 13, so it's going to be very basic then net charge of this glutamic acid is going to be negative one, zero and negative one. Net charge is going to be negative two or minus two. So now you see how easy it is to solve this type of problems. And I hope you would succeed on your exam and see you in the next video. Goodbye.